Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. So we're actually gonna make Resident Evil 8 Village videos. This is really exciting. Um, I'm a little bit nervous to make these types of videos just because I'm not an expert on Resident Evil, but I feel like I do know the game pretty well. I have played most of them, I just haven't played 5 and 0 for example, and yeah, I think that's pretty much it, 5 and 0 and like the other spin-off games, so. Um, but I am a really big fan. I really did enjoy um, all the Resident Evil games pretty much, and even 6 was fun. But yeah, I want to discuss the new trailer that we got for Resident Evil 8. This was a complete surprise by the way. I didn't expect to be seeing Resident Evil 8 there. As soon as I saw like that gun pistol animation, um, I just knew that was Resident Evil. I just I just knew it. I just knew that was like the exact same format as Resident Evil 7. And it's so weird that the rumors of Resident Evil Village came out to be true. Um, I didn't expect it to be true just because it sounded a little bit weird to title Resident Evil Village. But at the same time, it was like a clever title with the number 8 symbol, so I should have expected it. But yeah, today I want to discuss about not just the trailer, but I want to talk about a certain topic that was shown in the trailer. And it revealed that Chris will be returning in Resident Evil 8, but he is seen shooting Mia, who was a uh, main protagonist that Ethan tried to save in Resident Evil 7. So... I find it really crazy that I find it really crazy that Chris is doing this because first of all, the whole point was to save Mia, um, and also as well as Mia was the, in a way, the canon ending for Resident Evil Seven, um, because I'm assuming she's the canon ending just because of what happened with Zoe in the DLC. Um, spoiler, in case you haven't played it. If you haven't, then why are you here? But yeah, what I find it really strange is why Chris is doing this, and I just find it weird that um, from what I've heard from multiple people. They could say that maybe Ethan's the bad guy, maybe Mia set Ethan in a trap, but it's kind of hard to tell because I know in the beginning of the game, uh, or at the beginning of the trailer, Mia talks about some folklore, um, I think she talks about some village, which is the one that's seen throughout the whole game, which was where we're going to be taking place. I don't know what her involvement is because I really thought um, with her and the Baker family, I really thought that was going to be the end of it, if that makes sense. I really thought that was going to be the end of the trauma and that everything's going to pretty much be back to normal. Like, literally, I really thought that. But by the way it looks, it looks like that that is the complete opposite, considering this is still going to be Ethan's story. And um, Chris looks like he's going to have a big involvement. He wasn't seen in the other part of the gameplay. I'm not sure what he'll be doing, but... It is possible that um, this could be the end of Chris's legacy because what I'm about to tell you is gonna shook to you, shook you to the core. It probably isn't gonna be true, but hey, it, it's a theory. What I want to talk about is if the possibility of Chris possibly getting murdered because one, he's infected, or two, he just became a main villain all of a sudden. But yeah, I feel like there's reasons to why Chris might be infected. Um, this is obviously just speculation. We don't have any like exact proof that he's using dosage or got like infected anyway. But what what happened in Resident Evil Seven? The concept of Resident Evil Seven was that the Baker family were pretty much a normal family, and then Evelyn came in the picture and pretty much affected the whole family. Blah 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 blah. Really sad. Um, and that was awful for the Baker family, obviously. And the only one who made it pretty much was Zoe and um uncle jack i think is his name zoe was infected technically but it's kind of weird because she got infected in like a different way than the baker family she literally just got frozen while the baker family um pretty much just got like fungus i guess you could say it's kind of disgusting oh not fungus mole i guess are they the same thing I, i'm pretty sure the same thing but they pretty much got mole and obviously there isn't any sign from what we've seen of chris getting any mole Obviously, if this is a trailer. Usually in trailers, in case you guys don't know, they usually take out some of the shown images or stuff in the trailer. That way, it won't give too much speculation. Um, I've seen this happen before with other games. They do this usually just to like avoid spoilers. And maybe Chris could be seen here um, being infected or not. And there is another theory that I want to talk about, but I don't know how true it is. But basically, in the main cover of the game, Chris is seen being affected pretty much. Um, I totally forgot about this. Um, it looks really just like, it just further proves that Chris could possibly be like the main focus of this game. But my confusion is what does this have to do with the village? How is Chris connected to it? Or is he not connected to it at all? It's not the exact same as redesign as Resident Evil 7, but instead it's, it's following the Resident Evil 6 format of where his face is a little bit big and just a little bit chubby. While in Resident Evil 7, they made him a hunk, pretty much, so... Um, 
I honestly don't know why Capcom is doing this. Um, I was looking through the community, and everyone was just wondering, like, why the fuck do they do this? Because Resident Evil 7 is a sequel to Resident Evil 6, so it's kind of weird that Resident Evil 8, which is a sequel to 7, um, Chris looks back to normal pretty much. I don't know if it's because um, one of the designers just decided, like, hey, we don't know what the F to do. We're gonna just do this, and then make Capcom was like, ew, ew, this sucks, go back. So I don't know what they're up with that. If you guys know, be sure to let me know, but, um... I honestly don't know why they decided to do this again. Uh, part of a theory that could make sense if they if they if this if this actually happened. I don't know if it will, but it could be possible. Maybe there's two different versions of Chris, if that makes sense. Like maybe like a clone evil version of him, and then the Chris um is actually like okay, um where he's actually normal and not infected and not evil and not shooting up girlfriends. That's what I'm thinking about, but I'm not exactly sure. If that's the concept Capcom is going for, I think they're just like, ugh, the fans didn't like this Resident Evil 7 design, redesign, we might as well change it back again. So I find it kind of weird if that's really the intention of this whole circumstance, but anyways, back to the infected. Do I think Chris is going to get infected? Yes, I really do think Chris is going to get infected. For one, it doesn't really make sense that um, Chris decided to shoot up Ethan's girlfriend. I could be wrong, maybe Ethan's girlfriend is part of an evil group maybe but the issue is they already did that concept with um resident evil 7 where mia was in a way evil because of the baker family they pretty much like infected her and that's the reason she didn't see ethan and to my knowledge there isn't anything that could like infect her if that makes sense like i don't know where they can continue this from mia if the baker family is already done so the only logical explanation i could think about is since chris is working for umbrella again which is apparently a whole new company. It's not the same umbrella from like Resident Evil 3 or um, 2, for example. But in a way where maybe Chris, he somehow knew Ethan, and then this resulted maybe in a connection with the Baker's family. I'm not sure. Because it's really hard to tell what Ethan's going for. I know for Resident Evil 8, a lot of people really wanted the first person um, camera to be back because that was a really good, nice... Um, it really felt like a true horror aspect of Resident Evil, and it felt really cool. I low-key kind of wanted first person back as well, and I will admit I'm not a big fan of like these types of first person games, but Resident Evil really was like really fun, and um, even though I put it on easy, it was really fun. I had a good time. But what I find a little bit fishy is that for Resident Evil, um, Ethan is still the main character, and they could have done this with any other character, but I feel like Ethan might have been easier, maybe? I don't know, but it's weird how, to, how we're not playing as like Leon, Claire, um, all those other characters that I can't think of right now, Ava, uh, or oh, Ada, sorry, I'm like tired, and like, um, Jill, but for some reason they chose Ethan as a main character, which I really did like Ethan, so I'm wondering where he's gonna be in this, because clearly in the trailer where Chris is shown shooting Mia, it looks like it's his house, for example. It pretty much looks like his house. It doesn't look like anything bizarre or anything. I could be wrong, but I don't know. That's just my personal opinion. Um, I'm wondering if any returning characters will be in Resident Evil 8 because if Chris is infected, I feel like someone from... Chris literally has friends. I'm not joking. He literally has friends. I feel like someone has got to stop him, but if it takes place in a village, then obviously I don't know how far they can go <laughs> to like stopping Chris, but... Anyways, whatever this case might be, I'm really excited to see what will happen. I'm really, I'm really curious about Resident Evil 8. I think it might be releasing in, they said 2021, I believe, but I don't know if it's going to release early, either summer or late 2021. I hope it's late 2021, because I don't really want it to come too soon, if that makes sense. But hopefully the game is good. I've seen a lot of people complain that there was like frame rate drops in the trailer, and that looked downgraded. I don't know how it looked downgraded. The castle or mansion, whatever you want to call it, looks amazing, very beautiful. Everything from the trailer really looks amazing, and I'm just really excited to see what their direction is for this game, and hopefully it will be good, because for one, I need a good Resident Evil game again. I'm just joking. I really did like the remakes, I will say, but 3 was a little bit, tiny bit disappointing. Although I never played the original, it was still a little bit disappointing just because of the fact that I heard that they cut out a lot of content, and... I don't know if they did that with Resident Evil 2. I'm pretty sure... I, I don't think they did, actually. <laughs> but yeah, whatever the case may be, I hope that they um, do something about it and that the game is good. Hopefully it's not 8 hours long, at least 12 hours. <laughs> I know that sounds short, but 12 hours will really satisfy me. 
But yeah, I'm wondering what you guys' opinion on this. Do you guys think Chris is going to be infected or be the main villain? Let me know down in the comment section down below. It really helps out a lot. But yeah, this is where I'm going to be ending the video. Let me know if you guys want to see more Resident Evil 8 content. I really do want to stream the other Resident Evil games on my Twitch channel. So if you want to follow me, it'll be in the description down below. Whenever I do play them. But yeah, um, this announcement was really surprising. I really did enjoy it. It was so cool just to see it live on the PS5 event. Don't worry, I'm getting on PC. <laughs> but yeah. Anyways, this is where I'm going to end the recording. I hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to subscribe, like, hit that bell notification. It really helps out the channel a lot. And I'll see you guys later for another video. So yeah, goodbye everyone. Have a good day.